these four paintings um, going to sleep, this one, at dusk, spring, and September are all based on songs by Richard Strauss, the four last songs which he wrote at the very end of his life. And they are extremely beautiful pieces of music, set, uh, settings of poems by Hermann Hesse and Joseph von Eichendorf, all of which are, deal with old age, with dying, with the hope of future life. And um, they're full of an idea of transcendence, really. And both the music and the poems greatly insp uh, inspired me to, tr to have the temerity, really, to paint these um, versions, the, my own um, understanding of these, of these songs. In this one, for example, uh, the song September talks about summer, the figure of summer, falling asleep in the garden as the rains sweep over the garden, as the flowers fade and as the leaves fall from the acacia tree. And so it gave me scope to imagine this scene as a, almost a, a formal garden, an Italianate garden with cypresses against this wild landscape behind where the rain sweeps in. And summer is this naked woman who's lying amongst the flowers in the foreground. So it allowed my imagination free reign and it also allowed me the opportunity to work with paint and colour in a non-naturalistic -natural way, um, in an expressive way. So this is almost a, the opposite pole of much more kind of literal of, of, uh, landscape painting where I'm working from a real place. And the same can be said of these um, other paintings from this series. This one, for example, the, um, at, the at Dusk, the last of the series, talks of a couple rising up above the mountains and seeing the view at dusk as the light fails and two larks sing in the sky. And the last words of the song are, is this death. But although it ends on this note, there is this extraordinary sense of hope and of something beyond, which I've tried to convey in this landscape with the sort of distant view of mountains and the great plummeting depth that separates the people in the foreground from the mountains in the distance. This painting is called Jack Rowland to the Dark Tower Cane, and it's uh, inspired by a folk song uh, which is re was recorded by Martin Carnfield a few years ago. Uh, and it's a wonderful ballad, it's derived from an English fairy tale. And it tells a story, a very traditional kind of story, of a girl who, while playing, is um, carried away by the king of the hill, a figure representing death. And first one brother, then a second, and finally the third brother go in search of her. The first two brothers don't return, and it's the youngest brother, Jack, who goes on his mother's horse, and he has to obey certain uh, rules uh, about not eating, not drinking, as he travels to the king's castle. And when he comes to the king's castle, um, there he finds his sister and his brothers, um, the brothers lying dead on the ground, and he has to embark on this battle with the king with the aid of his magical horse. And finally they overcome the king and Jack rises, raises up his sister and his brothers again. Um, it's a wonderful song, it's a wonderful story. And it has a particular interest because it also relates to the line Child Road to the Dark Tower Cave, which is in um, a, the, the title of a Browning poem. And Browning took that from Shakespeare's King Lear. So Shakespeare, when he used it in King Lear, in the, man, in the mad scenes on the heath, was thinking of this very fairy tale, this very story 
that uh, also comes down through a folk song. So, but for me, apart from finding the whole story, the whole um, song extremely uh, interesting and exciting, it gave me the chance to um, Im- create this totally imaginary scene, um, really very divorced from reality. Uh, I've used paint extremely freely here, and there's very little suggestion of depth. Um, I've, it's a large painting, and it went through a whole number of phases where I scratched it out, I reworked it, and so in so doing, built up the textures and the colours considerably. And you'll see that there's very little fine detail in it. It's very broadly painted, and the paint's sort of put on in a whole number of different ways. It's dribbled, it's splashed, um, and it's scratched and abraded. The painting's actually on a board, and wood, for me, allows me to be much more kind of vigorous and uh, really uh, destructive almost to the surface before I arrive at my final result. And in this case, I also used glazes of colour, yellows here and greens here, pinks, um, which give it a sort of rather luminous stained glass quality, which is also enhanced by some of the sort of outlining of the figures. Um, the it's rather ruin-like, um, the way that I've painted some of these figures. But the, co- the total result is very flat and very patterned, um, and, which I think works with this subject, which is folk song, fairy tale, very mythic, um, about very fundamental themes of death and rebirth um, uh, in, in the case of these figures.